the breathing muscle linked to acid reflux and anxiety. When your breathing muscle is dysfunctional, you can suffer from anxiety, shortness of breath, and restlessness. It also affects your gut's nervous system, so it leads to slowed gastric emptying. It's caused, I'm gonna explain all this in a moment, and increased intra-abdominal pressure, a known link to acid reflux as well as hiatal hernia. It also amplifies symptoms like bloating, gas, nausea, and gut pain, even if you have low acid levels. So how does this happen and what is this breathing muscle? So it's called your diaphragm and it is a very uh, misunderstood, unacknowledged muscle and it's also an organ. So uh, when you are dysfunctionally breathing, meaning that due to pressure, which I mentioned a moment ago, uh, pressure of the stomach pushing up on the diaphragm, uh, pressure of the stomach going through the diaphragm, which is a hiatal hernia, with that pressure on it, that ability of the diaphragm to just beautifully float up and down as it's designed to do, it gets compromised. So you start breathing more shallowly and you can see people who are who are breathing shallow they'll they'll breathe with their shoulders a bit they're not just effortlessly getting breath all the way down into the diaphragm because the diaphragm can't move as well against the pressure pushing up on it it's simply a pressure issue and so um, with that you get the shallow breathing and then you with shallow breathing you're and if you get some anxiety associated with it, which frequently happens, then um, the, the shallowness and the, the anxiety is, is causing you to go into what's called sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight. And all of this, what it does, it increases your oxygen and decreases your carbon dioxide. And that might sound like a good thing because we think of oxygen as survival and carbon dioxide as, you know, just what, what happens when you're not bringing in oxygen. But they have to be balanced. And the, the oxygen carbon dioxide balance allows your nervous system to be balanced. And we're talking about your sympathetic nervous system, which gets more, um, uh, what, uh, activated with oxygen and your parasympathetic nervous system, which gets more activated with carbon dioxide. And they need to be balanced. So it's neither good nor bad, we just, we need balance. So when you have too much oxygen due to this shallow breathing, not enough carbon dioxide, uh, we move into fight or flight, as I mentioned, which then exacerbates and aggravates the feeling of anxiety and tension and um, you know you start getting into heart palpitations there's there's quite a cascade of symptoms associated with that parasympathetic is our rest digest relax part of our nervous system so you actually need enough carbon dioxide to to activate that part of the nervous system which also activates the vagus so there's a lot of steps to this but they're all very uh, integrally related because the vagus nervous system goes to your heart, your esophagus, your stomach, your diaphragm, all of your digestive organs, and uh, it effectuates whether the motion of your digestive system is the way it should be as far as motility it's called. So how fast or slowly things are moving through. And there is a rhythm to that, there is a timing to that. And if it slows down, it's not good. If your stomach, um, contents are not moving in the two to four hours that's normal, you feel like you swallowed a brick and it's just sitting there. That leads to infections, that leads to hiatal hernia because once again, you've got this built up of pressure in the stomach and it's pushing up on the diaphragm. And that slowed motility also affects your colon. So now you've got constipation another influence of increased intra-abdominal pressure. So the, these are so tied together and it, and it all goes back to breathing, your breathing muscle. So um, with the, the, the dysfunctional breathing, you're more likely to get anxiety, shortness of breath and restlessness. It's, very, it's a very uncomfortable feeling. Now the diaphragm is uh, told to work by a nerve called the phrenic nerve, which comes out of the neck. And you have seven vertebrae in your neck and three through five are the ones that send nerves directly to your diaphragm. And actually that phrenic nerve joins with the vagus uh, just before it, it, it connects to the diaphragm, which is interesting. But 
if you've had uh, neck issues, if you have neck pain, if you've had a lot of whiplashes, if you just have that bad posture of, you know, you lead with your head and your head, if you look at you from the side, is not over your body, it's, you know, it's, it's leading the way, that's not good posture. It's putting strain on this phrenic nerve in addition to your vagus nerve. So um, you want to definitely work on your posture, strengthen your neck muscles, see a doctor of chiropractic, see a physical therapist. It's very important that that neck is uh, functioning the way it should and the nerves are not irritated to prevent vagus irritation as well as phrenic nerve irritation going directly to the diaphragm. Okay, um, so then we have the gut's nervous system. It's called the enteric nervous system. And with the poor diaphragm function, it irritates the enteric nervous system. So what's interesting about this is that when the enteric nerves are irritated, they're more sensitized. So I liken this to getting a bad sunburn. If you've ever had a really bad sunburn, um, everything hurts. Even air blowing over your skin hurts. The nerves are sensitized. And Pain is pain. If you're feeling pain, you're feeling pain. No, you know, it can't be anybody's opinion. You know, it's like, oh, so you have bad sunburn. So, so what? It's like, no, this is painful. Similarly, with the diaphragm malfunction, you get sensitized nerves in your gut and you feel reflux pain. You feel just generalized pain in your gut. You feel burning. And one could do tests and say, and look and say, you don't have excess bath acid in your stomach, how could you feel burning? Uh, or, you know, the, your stomach is fine, you don't have inflammation in your stomach, why do you feel burning there? It's simply because your nerves are sensitized due to this uh, irritation to the enteric nervous system, your gut's nervous system, due to vagus nerve imbalance and diaphragm imbalance. That is absolutely legitimate. But unfortunately, you can find yourself because you're really feeling what feels like burning acid reflux pain, you can find yourself on medication that you don't need because you don't actually have any excess acid. Now you're feeling discomfort, but the root cause of it is not excess acid. It is this imbalance of your diaphragm and your enteric nervous system. So treatment has to come at it from a different direction. So, so many people, well, up to 40%, of people taking PPI medication, um, they don't get any benefit from it. So of course they wouldn't because it's decreasing the acid in your stomach and you don't need a decrease, not to mention all the side effects of PPIs, which I've gone over in a lot of different videos. So one needs to be able to look at this from different perspectives and say, is it too much acid or is it too little acid? You know, is it bile reflux? And then why are you so sensitized? So, you know, there's a number of different things we kind of tease out to figure out what's the root cause. It's not hard and treatment is natural, but you, you gotta know what's causing your symptoms. Okay, and then also um, we have what's called a signaling disruption. So the, the diaphragm has what's called mechanoreceptors. So the nerves are um, receiving information based on mechanics. So how, again, how well the diaphragm is moving and it affects blood pressure. It affects your heart rate. That's why when people with hiatal hernia or they have the spasming of the diaphragm just due to increased intra-abdominal pressure, even if they don't have a frank hiatal hernia, they can have blood pressure issues. They can feel lightheaded. They can feel dizzy. Their blood pressure can go up. Their heart rate can go too low. It can go too high. And that might sound like lots of different problems, but again, at the root cause, we have this one issue. And, um, but with that dysfunction, you can get acid reflux, you can get anxiety, you can get hiatal hernia. So I wanted to bring this up because here at the clinic, we, we see a lot of patients with hiatal hernia and uh, making sure the diaphragm is functioning ideally is very key. It's a very, it's a very missing link. You know, you've got the symptoms of digestion and then you might have the symptoms of, of heart and lung, like heart palpitation, shortness of breath. Well, what's connecting the heart and lungs to the uh, abdominal uh, organs like your, your stomach and your liver, etc. The diaphragm is that sheet of muscle that's right in between and it is playing a big role. So we don't want to ignore its very important role. And so I, 
I hope this made sense and know that there are solutions. They're natural, uh, not difficult to achieve. So I hope you found this interesting and informative. If you did, please uh, like, subscribe to the channel, ask me questions. I love your comments. I answer all of them and we'll talk soon.